Okay. Right. Um, how do you feel about your development um, from last year going into this year? That's a great question. Um, literally every single day, I'm still. I still feel like it's so much, so much areas in me for the like to improve on. So um, it's so hard for me to look back in the past and see how far I came because I still see things I need to work on and I need to hone in on. So I guess I mean I just feel like it's that's a constant. That's a constant. That's that's gonna be. I don't think that's ever gonna stop with me because I'm just so hard on myself. I'm just so tough on myself. I mean. That's what that's why I said that's a great question. I think that's a I think that's an ongoing battle, you know, as I go deep and deep in my career. You know, I'm constantly looking for areas to develop my game. And you know, with new offenses and the way this game revolutionizes, I don't think it'll ever be a time where I feel like I'm comfortable and I got things figured out. You've always had a pretty big chip on your shoulder. When you listen to some of the outside questions about this team, one of the big areas of concern is that secondary. And is there enough in the secondary? You're obviously a major piece of that secondary. Do you use that as motivation? Do you pay attention at all to, to add to what's on your shoulder? No, I ignore that, honestly. I mean, I got a, I got my team, I got my brothers with me. You know, I don't pay attention to outside noise. You know, people always go say what they got to say. But at the end of the day, I'm between them white lines and I know, I know what I'm about. And other people in the league who I guarded know what I'm about as well. So I just let the people do their talking. The fact that the Jets didn't bring in a veteran cornerback, is that a, I know you're a confident guy, but did that almost show their confidence in you and Bryce that you, you know they didn't go out and get in a high-priced veteran? Um, the front office and the coaching staff always do, does a great job of communicating to us where their head is at. So I wasn't surprised at all about that. You know, um, with me and Bryce, a lot of people forget me and Bryce was highly rated dudes coming out of college. You know, we just fell short to injury. So I feel like that's something that a lot of people forget, you know, and there's a reason why they didn't bring a veteran corner in here, not to knock any of the veteran corners that may be out there, but there's a reason why they see something in us, you know what I mean? So it's no surprise at all. Did you watch it when you were watching film? Was there any specific corner of in Robert Sala's defense that you locked in on that you were like, you know, maybe watch film of him, Richard Sherman comes to mind, anybody that you're like, this is how he played in this defense, this is how I want to play? Yeah, for sure, um, Jalen Ramsey. You know, Ramsey, for sure, no doubt. And um, I like to look at Emmanuel Mosley. Mosley's a dude who I, I like looking at as well. You know, he's very twitchy, he's fast, and he got great instincts as well. So I like to study his game too. Do you, look, do you come to camp less saying you're the starter, or do you see this as a wide open competition? I come to camp looking forward to get my next contract. I don't worry about who's starting. I don't worry about none of that. I mean, I think I'm the real deal. There ain't no secret in that. Click the tape, play, press play, you know. Of course, I made mistakes, but there's also a lot of plays I made on that field that other, other corners in this league is not making. So that as far as, like, who's starting and those things like that, I don't look at it like that at all. I'm looking forward to extending my time here on the Jets by making more plays. We were just talking to Robert, and he, used, he described you as having a dog mentality. I mean, what, what are your thoughts when a coach says something like that about you? I mean, that's a tremendous compliment. You know, um, when I hear that, you know, the only thing I think is, to make sure that I don't ever leave his mind, you know what I mean? Make sure that I stay consistent and I continue to make that, you know, my my trademark. What have your opinions been of uh, Corey Davis and Elijah Moore, two guys you've you've matched up a pretty decent amount? Um, I'm extremely ecstatic we have those guys here. When I tell you, like, my excitement is beyond, like, the fact that I get to line up against that every single day and get those looks, you know, I definitely look forward to practice. They make practice extremely fun. Because there's not ever one day I can just come out here and go through the motions and think I'm gonna have a successful day. So um, I'm 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 extremely, I'm extremely ecstatic about having those guys here. Every group, of, every guy in that receiving room, you know, especially the offense that we go against now, is definitely something that you got to buckle up and be ready for every day. How much does that help? With, I mean, we can talk a little bit about the development. How much does going against those guys help improve your game? It, it helps me improve it a lot. Because first of all, the, the formation sets that they come out in. And the things that they force me to do, you know, it points out is it, it points out to a lot of the weaknesses in my game that I once had, you know, that teams used to try and do to me to, to get me out of my comfort zone. So the fact that I'm able to go against that every day is now it's put me it's making me feel at home and a lot of the things that I didn't like doing necessarily. What are some of those things? That, that... Um, I let that stick to practice field. If y'all out there seeing it, y'all know what it is. Bryce ever talk about that stuff that you mentioned before that you were highly rated and injuries kind of you know brought you down a little. Do you ever talk about that like you know overcoming that and, and yeah. how it drives you guys? Oh uh, honestly no. 
we just worrying about making plays and being the best we can for the defense because we, uh, we had a noise out there. But, you know, it is what it is. People go talk. How does this you? defense fit you? Just how have you had to kind of adjust what you were doing from last year? How much of an adjustment has that been? And overall, how do you feel about how you fit this defense? Um, I always say this. I, I fit any defense. And I say that because, you know, it's all about the amount of work you put into learning the defense and understanding what teams will try to run on that defense to put you in compromised positions. If you can st stay ahead of that, then you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I mean, I don't think any defense just, you know, points out my abilities or make me strong in this area and weak in this area. You know, I feel like the amount of time you put in, that's necessarily what you're going to get out. Did you have a fully healthy offseason? And what was that like, finally? Um, I had a healthy offseason last year as well, too. So, um, I mean, I, th those things, like, I don't really pay too much attention. I, I stay in the moment. Like, I stay day to day with it. So, um, great offseason. I stayed here with the staff. You know, I did that as well in the spring, too. So, it wasn't too many vacation days on my part. I think the first time we ever talked to you as a rookie, you said, you know, we were asking you about your goals, what you want to do, and you said, I want to be the best corner in the NFL. You're now going, obviously, into another season. At the end of this year, do you think that's possible? Do you think people will be talking about you in the same light as Jalen Ramsey and some of the best corners in the NFL? I learned how you get that done is by taking it a day at a time and then focusing on the best ones and understanding what steps they took, you know, and the, and the growth that they had to go through in certain things. You know, like I said, with all the areas I have to work on and improve, day by day I knock it down. I'm most definitely planning on hearing that at the end of the year. What's it like for you in the cornerback room since you're, you know, essentially the vet of the group now? Um, the kind of, we got great, you know, continuity. I, I don't, I don't act as if I'm extremely older than the other guys. You know what I mean? Because when I do that, you know, it kind of, I feel like that kind of put me at a disadvantage as well as understanding like it's still so much to learn. You know, two years is not a lot on a lot of teams because how much vets they usually have. So I, I kind of I stay in my place still, you know, understanding like if it was a vet in the room, you know, I'll still be that young guy. But at the end of the day, I still try to give whatever knowledge I can, but also stay in my place. I keep, you know, everything moderation. Bless, can I just ask you one other one? We asked you about Corey Davis and Elijah Moore, but you knew a young Tyler Croft at Rutgers. What does he add out there? I mean, just his size alone in the red zone. He's much faster than I thought. Um, and I always joke around with him about that, you know, because he can move and he's such a big dude. And also, like, he's a great blocker as well. He's not only a guy you put out there, you're expecting the ball to be put in the air. He's somebody who could, you know, put his head, his hand in the dirt, his head on somebody's body and, and move someone. So it's great to have him out there as well. Definitely makes the offense much more complex. How much does having a, the defensive line that you all have with Carl Austin, Quinn Williams, uh, Foley, Chef, how much does that make your job easier from a cover standpoint? Like I'm an extreme competitor, so um, as easy as it does make it, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to be the weak link, the weak link on the team. I want them to look at it like all we have to do is get there. We know, we know, Bless got this. We know Bryce got this. You know, we know May got this. You know, I want them to look at us as somebody to lean on rather than always it being the other way around. But no doubt about that, you know, them dudes are this dominant front.